Have you ever wondered what goes on behind the scenes at the Atlanta Opera? This series of short videos highlights the unsung heroes and heroines of our opera company. Those individuals that create the visual images we see on stage in the final production. The opera companies cast their people because of how they sing, not because of how they look. So any decent opera company is going to need a wig and makeup department. In this segment, we see just how the wigs and makeup department works its magic. My name is Rick Jarvie, and I'm going to be the head of wigs and makeup on this particular production, Flying Dutchman. But this is my third show with the Atlanta Opera. I'm very happy to be back. Uh, my name is Aida Stafel. I'm a makeup artist. I've also studied wig making and wig uh, styling. Started in Lima, Peru, working with a great makeup artist, Rosy Salinas, who studied in the BBC. I've been doing this for about 25 years. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The call is one hour. This is your one hour call to places, please. I've been with the Atlanta Opera for five years. Dutchman productions vary so greatly. It can be very simple or it can be very complicated. This production we're hoping to use as little in the way of wigs for the course as possible. The wigs that you see out here right now are what we're going to use to um, put on the ghost sailors. So they're supposed to be sort of scraggly and otherworldly. Most of the time, uh, the director will speak with the uh, designer. At this, it, right now it's Rick, and Rick will convey to us what he wants, and we follow his lead. The ghosts in this production, so far as per the director's wishes, are going to be sort of pale, glisteny, sort of um, uh, luminescent ghosts. They're not going to be horrific, awful monster ghosts quite like Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, we are creating again the Rick Jarvis design for the ghost and then we're just putting the highlights and the shadows. My name is Nanette Kennedy. I work with the Atlanta Opera as a wig and makeup artist. Now I am preparing one of the ghosts. My name is Charles Swint and I'm one of the super ghosts in The Flying Dutchman. Actually pulling double duty this time, I work as the audience development manager for the Atlanta Opera full time. Hi, I'm Christina Whitaker. I'm a wig and makeup artist here at the Atlanta Opera and I'm also getting <laughs> the chorus ready, the ghost chorus ready for Flying Dutchman. Well, one thing is we want to be sure to keep it consistent with what the designer has set for us at the very beginning, making sure that the designs don't evolve as we do it from night to night, making sure we stay true to the design, and also making sure there's a sense of uniformity among all of the different um, guys. And it's also, there's a lot of layering, a lot of different techniques in here, and we have to just really be sure that we're all on the same page. I'm Monty Sheath. I've been chorus uh, wig supervisor for many years at the Atlanta Opera. My responsibility is to make sure that everybody gets the appropriate wigs and facial hair and everything on mm -hmm. top of show. And a lot of the wigs that we use for the opera are what's called a lace front wig and see how this front is all hand tied so that the hairlines look very natural. And as you can see, when that is applied, that lace goes very transparent. This show's very natural, um, not a lot of styling, like an 18th century opera, which is lots of white hair all piled up and, you know, very, very styled. So see, these are very, very loose, very natural. I've been assigned Santa, and I want to make her a beautiful young lady that she is. Mostly what's special about this wig is it needs to be very, very long. Yeah. And it would be cost prohibitive to buy hair that is like 30 inches in length. So what we do is we fake it by adding pieces in the back. And these sections are all stitched into a piece of, of ribbon so we can make the hair look like it's very, very long. This is the double wig for her character for when she's supposed to be wet and, and distressed. And this wig can stay styled and this wig is the distressed wig. So um, she's the friend and confidant, and again, they're supposed to look very natural, as if she's got a lot of hair that she then braids and just real casually puts it up. And with an opera like this, it's, um, it's good to keep things looking very, very organic, as opposed to an imposed style, so that when the audience sees it, it, it doesn't feel forced, you know, that they do look very much as if they 
you know, they actually live a life that's not just on stage. We also have a lot of facial hair in this opera. Uh, facial hair can really anchor a specific time period in history. Uh, because we have ghosts from different periods, there are ghosts from the Cavalier time period, we've got Elizabethan, uh, various, various times in history. And uh, the facial hair is glued on, so to stay on uh, while they sing and perform and, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so I'm attaching facial hair, and what we want to do is get a uh, glue on to cover the area that the hair is going to be applied to. So I come in and get a layer of glue on, then I put a small amount of glue on the piece. So it's sort of sticky to sticky. It's very, very strong and durable, but uh, it does clean off with alcohol. And then I use a glue puff to set the glue, and it makes it go matte, and it pulls the excess glue away. And then we get the edges. And it really doesn't take very much glue. I always tell people, more glue is only more glue. It's not more adhesion. So it shouldn't even look like there's any on this piece of lace. You just get the barest amount. So it does work kind of like a rubber cement. So you don't even see any, any liquid on there. He's from a different time period, a Cavalier time period, more like 15, 1600s, late 1500s, early 1600s. So the style of his costume and the style of his facial hair are dictated by that. In that time period, a cavalier, the, the mustache shaped like this and sort of a little point on the beard was kind of a hallmark of that period. <clears throat> and, and very long kind of Goya-esque hair. Blue, but I can also pin them usually and keep them on real good and tight. So now I've got a little band on him. Yes. Okay, now for this gentleman, I can pretty much pin the wig on. If I don't have to use glue, I don't use glue because it's, you know, it's hard on the skin. Rick Jarvie, the designer, just put this front, it's a new front on the wig, and he likes to leave as much lace as possible. And because this character is primarily like in the dark and, and stuff, this this margin of lace won't show. A friend of mine years ago asked me what kind of makeup I did, and I told him I worked for the opera and for Shakespeare, and he said, "Oh, you like making people look like children's book illustrations," which is is pretty apt actually, because that's what I wanted to do when I went to college was do uh, illustrations for books, but um, this sort of seemed like a good way to be painting and drawing on people. You don't want people to look at a show and say, wow, what terrific wigs you had in that show. You want them to think it's real. You don't want them to think it's you know, wigs on stage. So if, if you don't notice us, we've done our jobs uh, better, actually.